uh, let me do a little bit of a rant here. Um, because let me tell you, honestly, like my mentions have been absolutely fucked since, <laughs> since I put this tweet out, since I put this tweet out, I have been the main character. Okay. Here I go being the main character again. Um, so look, b- before I talk about what I said here and listen, you guys are free to disagree in chat and, and voice your own opinions. I'm not going to be looking at chat right now because I'm going to play this Dave Rubin clip. And, uh, and, you know, and then after that, that I'll, you know, sort of like contextualize what I'm saying here and then we can, you know, sort of have go back and forth a little bit, but, you know, uh, read what's going on here. And if you disagree, you know, come up with your take. I'll be reading chat in a second, but first off, let's, let's look at this, uh, goofy ass Dave Rubin clip that I think David Dole sent me. And, um, then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sort of respond to that. People need to see, and this goes to your question about what conservatives do. Conservatives need to start showing people, hey, you know, we're actually the fun people. We're the interesting people. We're the creative people. We're the open-minded people. They're all hysterical and angry and all of the things they purport us to be. But let's get out there and show people that's not who we are. We're actually having fun. And I mean, try to even think about it this way. Where do you think the next great music or art is going to come from? Do you think it's going to come from the Marxist left where you can't have any individual expression? Or do you think it's going to come from this new thing on the right? I mean, the answer is pretty obvious to me. People need <laughs> this new thing. This new thing on the right. You know, what, one thing that I love about Dave Rubin's dumbass takes is like, whatever the right is doing, he's always trying to like package it as being like brand new, as if Dave has not been on like you know this weird right wing downward spiral for the past five years, uh, what, whatever it is, it's like no longer new at this point. It's like very much an established thing to the point where like Donald Trump, even for all of his issues and problems, if he decides to run is most likely going to be, you know, the, the front runner primary Republican challenger when, uh, you know, the GOP does their primaries. So, you know, whatever this, uh, new old thing is, uh, that is the, you know, uh, uh, lifespan of a presidential, you know, uh, stint in office and uh, a little bit longer uh, is, is you know, whatever the GOP is now. Uh, so, yeah. So Dave said that. And, you know, I especially took uh, to heart the, the spot where he was talking about where's the next great music going to come from? The Marxist left or this new thing on the right? Uh, well, here's here's what I said. Here was my response. Uh, conservatives are not fun, creative, smart, empathetic or interesting. That's why they don't make great art. Their art sucks ass, period. Uh, the next great music will never come from the right. Uh, and it, uh, it hasn't so far. Why would it ever in the future? So there you go. That's my take. Those are my thoughts. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, first off, conservative is the new punk rock. That is, that is true. You know, let, let, let me clarify a few things here. First off, and, and I know a lot of people got, you know, sort of offended by this or sort of reacted to this in this way. This is not even necessarily a pro left statement because a lot of musicians who I talk to and that I'm aware of, and I interact with uh, for the most part, like when it comes to politics, they're not reading Marxist theory all day. They're not like hardcore leftists. There are hardcore leftist artists and musicians. There certainly are. There are. There most definitely are. But, um, you know, what I'm saying here is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, a lot of the musicians who I interact with and who I see and, and, you know, who come out with great stuff, they're not like reading super hardcore lefty, you know, material and, and uh, you know, dialogues all day and so on and so forth. A lot of them don't even pay super close attention to politics. So when I say what I say here, it's not even to say that, uh, yeah, me, great music has to come from the left. Every great musician's a lefty and so on and so forth. Um, you know, all I'm saying here is that uh, conservatism as a whole and conservatism as an ideology, given that musical movements in the past are mostly based in youth culture, are mostly based in some kind of uh, aesthetic radical change from whatever is the status quo musically and artistically at the time, given that that is the case, like it's not in the recipe for conservatism to embrace radically new and different sounds in music. Oftentimes, conservatism as an ideology and as a culture has historically rejected whatever is the groundbreaking, new, cutting-edge, uh, youth culture-based musical or art movement at the time. 
uh, and I'll get into that further. I'm looking at, uh, are there some people in chat? Frank Sinatra, you know, Frank Sinatra, fine, but I wouldn't call him a jazz innovator. You know, like when we're talking about the next great music here, I don't, I don't think Frank Sinatra and I don't think, uh, you know, Eric Clapton either. Like guy was easily washed by Jimi Hendrix. I think for the most part, uh, allowing the Brits to run away with the blues rock narrative w was kind of a mistake. Uh, Ariel Pink, we're going to get into Ariel Pink in a second. Uh, he's actually a, a part of this, uh, this, this video and conversation. Kanye West is a difficult pick because he doesn't really map neatly over any political ideology. He got on the Trump train, but then he also called out homophobia and hip hop. But then he also, you know, has voiced anti-abortion views. But then he's also given millions of dollars to BLM. And, you know, he famously said George Bush doesn't care about black people. Kanye, I think, is more of an opportunist than he is uh, some sort of like, you know, hardcore political actor in, in any direction, honestly. Uh, Tom McDonald is obviously trash. He doesn't make good music. Nobody who cares about music really gives a shit about Tom McDonald. It's not even really about Kanye simply being a true conservative. As far as politics go, I don't think Kanye is a true anything. I think he's really just like uh, an individualist in a mixed bag. Um, Lil Pump. Lil Pump is a crackhead and <laughs> not representative, even though I enjoy some of his stuff and he has some bangers. I don't think he's a, uh, indicative of, a you know, a, the next great music, uh, Morrissey, you know, Morrissey is definitely a very important musical figure. Morrissey, like Kanye, is almost a bit of a mixed bag. Like he does have some very dicey views when it comes to gender and race. But then simultaneously, he does have some very lefty views on stuff like veganism and, and stuff like that. You know, I, I think, uh, Jesus, Anthony, <laughs> Lil Wayne, you know, are we, when we're talking about Lil Wayne, are we talking about Lil Wayne in terms of like, you know, his, his embrace of Trump to get uh, the pardon or are we, are we talking about other stuff? I know Lil Wayne has, uh, uh, various views on, on things like, uh, you know, racism and stuff like that. Oh, skillet. Yes. Skillet. Uh, uh, Kanye is more of a libertarian. Maybe Kanye is more of a libertarian, but you know, here's the thing. Like when I talk about conservatism, I'm talking about, you know, almost in the way that Dave Rubin is talking about it here, you know, just like conservatism as a whole and as a culture. Um, yeah, Morrissey again is like so much of a mixed bag. Nicki Minaj is also pretty <laughs> confusing. Yeah. Kid rock, you know, see, see, here's the thing. It's like, the musicians who you could undoubtedly say are probably the most staunchly conservative, be it like Kid Rock or Ted Nugent or um, Skillet, Tom McDonald, they're usually the most cringe. Like the musicians that you guys are bringing up here that are actually worth something, they're usually more of a mixed bag. Um, John Mouse, I've never really been into his stuff that much, and I, I've reviewed his music multiple times. Um, Da, 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 da. Yeah, you know, you say Sex Pistols, but I think they're also like you have to think about the Sex Pistols in terms of like their most relevant material at the start of their career and whether or not they represented conservatism at that time, which they most definitely did not like the Sex Pistols and punk rock in general uh, at that time in the 70s in the UK were not representative and were not supported by conservative culture that they were surrounded with. It was aesthetically and attitude wise, a rebellion against that. Um, so, you know, with that, I think I'll sort of circle back to a previous point. And I think this discussion is like much larger, larger than, you know, whether or not we can say, yeah, this one musician that I like, or this one musician who's kind of, you know, an important historical figure has some conservative views, because we also have to look at like, music as a whole culturally and in terms of like the audience that's receiving it and supporting it as well. And again, when we talk about conservatism historically and philosophically, has there been a youth based, you know, art and music movement in popular culture over the past 70 years, we're talking like 1950s forward, that conservatism as an ideology and as a culture has embraced and there hasn't, there has not been. Like in the 50s and before that with the blues, uh, conservatism did not embrace rock and roll. In fact, Elvis Presley couldn't even shake his fucking hips on stage, uh, not even on stage, but on uh, Ed Sullivan, because that was considered uh, too risque. Couldn't couldn't shake the hips because, you know, I mean, that was sort of the dominant perception of 
uh, you know, sex appeal and uh, being suggested when it comes to sex at the time. Uh, you know, I mean, that was a conservative, a socially conservative point of view that was uh, very dominant at the time. And rock and roll uh, rebelled against that in its own way. Was conservatism embracing uh, hippie culture through the 60s? No, absolutely not. Uh, conservatism was very much against uh, hippie culture, uh, very much against a lot of the... Um, you know, radical or sort of like a politically charged funk and soul that would come after, uh, because obviously conservatives were so much more, uh, you know, into the idea of uh, segregation, Jim's uh, Jim Crow, so on and so forth, uh, were, you know, conservatives at the forefront to support uh, punk music or hard rock or uh, disco. Um, no, very much not. Were conservatives uh, on the cutting edge when it came to embracing the later years, the latter years of hard rock or um, metal music? No, they were deep into the midst of a satanic panic over all that shit. Uh, conservatives were more were more likely to believe that uh, listening to a Judas Priest record uh, would uh, help you like connect with Satan himself. Uh, you know, the Reagan youth were not out here like listening to punk 45s and uh, spinning Alice Cooper records. I'm sorry. Um, conservatives didn't even really embrace grunge music culturally through the 90s. And I was alive during that shit. And grunge music, like on the whole, was not even that political of a genre of music. I mean, certainly there were people in the style that had vocal viewpoints uh, in certain songs or like in interviews like Kurt Cobain, but like on the whole conservatives did not did not really embrace grunge music. Uh, they didn't really embrace hardcore hip hop and gangster rap. They were more likely to uh, demonize that. They didn't really care for that. Fuck the police song all that much. Conservatives aren't really crazy about the fuck the police track. Yeah, they, they weren't big on that one. Um, and, you know, some people bring up country music. Uh, yeah, Screwdriver is trash. <laughs> One of the shittiest, most irrelevant punk bands of all time with absolutely nothing like lyrically or sonically, uh, you know, bringing anything lyrically or sonically to the table other than just like straightforward racism. Uh, Screwdriver is just garbage. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, you know, again, really uh, having a hard time Again, trying to think of like a musical movement that conservatism embraced, uh, you know, someone in the chat says Burzum. And, you know, I think with that, you can kind of lump in, uh, you know, maybe some of the Nordic black metal of the 90s as a whole. But, you know, that's kind of a different context because you have to sort of like, you know, consider that that is not in a U.S. That is not in a Western in terms of American context. And a lot of those bands and a lot of those artists, you know, regardless of what uh, Varg's beliefs are now, I mean, they're obviously trash, but um, you have to consider the fact that a lot of those bands were rebelling against the hierarchy of Christianity in their music and embracing paganism and, you know, were really burnt up about shit like the Crusades. And uh, yeah, you know, a lot of them ended up in sort of a right wing bin as a result of all of that, because, you know, they tie that bullshit into, uh, you know, like uh, uh, race culture and racial identity and nationality and, and so on and so forth. But not all bands did. And, um, you know, you do have to consider that uh, uh, if, if they were truly coming at this from a conservative standpoint, from a conservative, from a culturally, for, for their own cultural context, because remember, it's the 90s. They don't have the fucking internet, okay? <laughs> they, they can't go on Twitter and, like, you know, see what's, like, trending and, and read Donald Trump tweets, okay? Like, you know, you have to think about what cultural conservatism would have been for their context in the in the late 80s, in the early 90s, as a bunch of like Scandinavian teenagers that want to play noisy, more aggressive versions of like, you know, Slayer records and Metallica records and whatever thrash records were like popular at the time. You know what I mean? So uh, music history is uh, boring. It is. But I mean, we have to like kind of discuss it or else we come away from these situations with the belief that, yeah, like, where's the next great music going to come from? Is it going to come from the Marxist left? Blah, 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 blah. Or is it going to come from the right? This new thing going on on the right. So, you know, we, we have to kind of talk about it and put things in context in context or else we have like, you know, really dumbass uninformed takes. Um, 
So again, I, I think there is sort of like, you know, not an argument that a lot of those bands uh, in, you know, uh, a Nordic context uh, were left wing. I'm not making that argument, but they were certainly rebelling against uh, a certain type of conservative and Christian based culture within their own countries and their own context. Um, you know, and whether or not they did that, uh, uh, you know, successfully or ended up somewhere that was, you know, uh, great ideologically, that's again, another conversation, but, uh, still, um, you know, again, uh, to sort of like go back to what I was saying earlier and, uh, acknowledge what someone is saying in chat, like culturally conservatives are not for pushing boundaries and really engaging anything that uh, philosophically they see as degeneracy. I mean, look at the fact that a lot of them on Twitter and other social media platforms couldn't even fucking handle uh, Cardi B's pussy rap song. They couldn't even fucking handle Lil Nas X doing a little Satan lap dance. It's the fucking satanic panic all over again, coming full circle. Oh, uh, oh think of the children. Oh, no, you, you're making songs for kids. You can't give Satan a lap dance dance it's like you know heavy metal it's kiss uh knights in satan's service bullshit all over again it's just like another fucking generation of it so um yeah negative xp sucks he's literally just a waves ripoff it's literally just waves but with edgy lyrics like if you didn't have waves like negative xp most likely wouldn't even exist um conservatives love taylor swift but like Taylor Swift is far from cutting edge, in my opinion. And on top of that, she's more or less like rejected their gaze as of late. So I don't know if they're uh, so much into her right now. Um, <laughs> Mariah Carey is Mariah Carey super conservative. I'm not really aware of her uh, point of view. Um, Folk music is folk music conservative on the whole was was Woody Guthrie a conservative? I mean, he, you know, raged against the fascism uh, and, and, you know, even had uh, some of his songs edited because they didn't like some of the leftier content in there because he, he was he was paid by the government to, uh, you know, perform and write music, you know, like uh, you can actually look it up. This land is your land, which, you know, he wrote, obviously, um, it, you know, was uh, uh, he got in a little bit of trouble for the. Um, uh, you know, or not in trouble, but, you know, they, they didn't like some of the more lefty sort of suggestive lyrics that were in the content of that track. Um, mm -hmm. Is Freddie Gibbs super right wing? I mean, he hates cops. <laughs> He's, I mean, Freddie Gibbs, like he may have like some socially conservative views, but like simultaneously, why he uh, while he and many other rappers, uh, you know, may feel some of that stuff. There's certainly like some socially conservative overlap in in some circles of hip-hop due to a lot of things you know could be like you know church background could be like five percent nation background and you know those views do tend to slant kind of conservative but simultaneously a lot of people who are um you know a part of those groups do acknowledge the fact that there is like a dominant oppressive white hierarchy above them that uh you know needs to be fought against and needs to be worked against so you know there's sort of like um uh a mixed bag there in that context as well um so you know look uh, oh david Bo <laughs> are we talking about david bowie's like little fascist era where he had his a uh, you know little uh, blonde cropped haircut yeah david bowie has interviewed multiple times and has uh, very much disavowed that era has uh, openly regretted that era and uh, has acknowledged that that era was uh, very much influenced by cocaine so <laughs> like you have to take into account that uh, along with uh, the fact that David Bowie spent so much time gender bending up until that point, like stuff that conservatives never would have expected or never would have accepted, you know, during the, uh, uh, you know, during some of his prime years. Um, Leonard Skinner are OK. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. You know, again, hip hop generally is kind of a uh, kind of a mixed bag. You know, you talk about Prince. I, I was talking about Prince on Twitter because some people uh, mentioned him. Uh, Prince was absolutely radical socially for his time because you have to consider like in the 80s, like a lot of the stuff he was putting on record was absolutely sexually revolutionary. He, he was even targeted by the PMRC, which... Um, was very much a socially conservative group, 
and in a lot of ways, you know, an extension of that satanic panic that was going on during the 80s. Um, I know there are a lot of people that say like, oh, well, Tipper Gore was married to Al Gore. I mean, but she was like one of four people that founded the group. And there were uh, women in the group who were also like, you know, wives of, uh, uh, you know, Republican politicians or, you know, uh, you know, right leaning uh, people as well. And, um, you know, I, you have to sort of consider that in the 1980s and in the 70s, uh, when it came to rock music, when it came to hip hop music, uh, there was no like left leaning understanding of like what that music was, what it meant, uh, whether it was a danger to society for a lot of politicians left and right um, at the time, meaning, you know, Republican and Democrat. Um, you know, it's uh, the, it, it was sort of seen as like, you know, breaking new ground in this in this horrifying thing that could potentially be like rotting the minds of, of the youth. And obviously it didn't turn out that way. And now we even have like, you know, Republican douchebags like Paul Ryan that uh, listen to Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> The conservative option these days is more like, you know, um, don't see what is problematic about the music or what offends you uh, about the music. Just look past it and ignore it entirely. Uh, you know, at, at one point so many years ago, we are getting upset about, um, you know, Prince singing about uh, a woman masturbating. But these days we're literally rocking out to a communist rap rock band and uh, just really like paying no mind to any of it because we're just ignoring context and, and all of that. Um, so, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. So I, I do know that Prince does hold some like, you know, socially conservative views as a result of his, uh, you know, maybe Christian faith or something like that. But again, when we're looking at the context of conservatism during Prince's most prolific, significant, and culturally relevant and controversial years, the stuff he was putting out was very much in opposition of what would have been sort of like the uh, uh, conservative point of view at that time. Conservatives in the PMRC in the 80s, their point of view of Prince's music then was very much what Ben Shapiro's point of view of WAP is now. Uh, it is a boring, square, dumb, and uninformed, and overly, I guess, uh, concerned point of view. Um, uh, Harry Pickle 99 says you are a pseudo intellectual. Um, well, your name is Harry Pickle 99. So you're not working with too many brain cells to begin with. So, uh, wet, wet ass, wet ass P word. Wet ass P word. Thank you. Um, there is death in June. Death in June. I see is sort of like being in context of a greater neo folk movement, which is, you know, sort of like, uh, not just death in June though. Um, and I guess like, you know, uh, I've, I've sort of read into that here and there, and sometimes it seems like there could be a fascist element. Sometimes there couldn't, it's something that has seemed in the past when I've looked into it a little bit. Um, I don't know, I guess like could cut any direction. I don't want to sort of like, you know, uh, argue with what you're saying there because, um, or, you know, necessarily agree because I I don't want to be here on stream and, and, and I guess like, um, I guess like amplifier, I guess, cosign what you're saying, because I would be inadvertently like calling the guy a fascist, uh, because that, that's where a lot of that comes from. You know, the, the argue, the argument online and sort of in general discourse is whether or not death in June is like purely a, you know, a fascist music project. And, um, you know, there, there is some controversy over whether or not that's the case. And I don't want to, uh, you know, again, necessarily like, uh, uh, argue with that and, you know, inadvertently like say that that is the case. Um, now in the midst of like all of this, I got so many like responses and so much engagement. It's uh, pretty ridiculous and hilarious. Uh, but I actually just noticed just this morning from a few days ago, one of the people I got responding was Ariel pink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Ariel Pink is, uh, uh, you know, sort of citing some conservative uh, voices in uh, in music in general. Uh, he cites Easy E, which again we already talked about uh, Easy E earlier. He's, um, you know, he he, uh, he wrote that uh, that song that conservatives love. He wrote that uh, fuck the he helped you know at least rap on that fuck the police song. And again, conservatives vibe with that track. Uh, if you guys uh, see uh, if if you guys saw the January sixth uh, shit going down at the, uh, at the Capitol, you know, or, or, and everything like that. Uh, their attitude was very much fuck the police. So maybe he has a point there. Uh, Ariel Pink also says me. Uh, 
He says all country music, which is very much not the fucking case. <laughs> There's lots of uh, old school country music that does not lean like super racist or super right wing or super, uh, I'm proud to be an American. Uh, and, you know, again, it's pretty funny that he says me because, you know, what I find funny about Ariel Pink being a conservative is in, in a lot of ways, I think like Ariel Pink is the worst type of conservative that, um, you know, really annoys me. And that's that, you know, we're a conservative, but we don't actually have to adhere to any of the social expectations or conservative values that, you know, talking heads like Bill O'Reilly or Ben Shapiro and so on and so forth uh, often cite as being like the degradation of society. We can be conservative and we can, you know, say racist stuff or misogynist stuff while living in, you know, the hotbed of liberal degradation in L.A. and just be like, you know, doing coke and speed all day. But, uh, you know, we, we don't actually have to, like, live the conservative lifestyle. We could just be totally coked out every day, but call ourselves conservative and support Donald Trump. You see what I'm saying here? There's kind of like a bit of a disconnect here that I think is indicative of, well, it's, it's certainly not new because how many conservative politicians over the years have railed against homosexuality and then, you know, they're, they're caught having sex with uh, a male prostitute or something like that, which, of course, like, you know, I'm, this is not a homophobic statement. I mean, if that's, you know, the way you feel, if that's your, you know, your your sexual orientation, that's fine. That's great. I embrace that. I think you should embrace that, you know, and, and, and not to say that you need to force yourself out of the closet or anything like that. But at the very least, if those are your feelings and that's your way, uh, you probably shouldn't be making a living off of, you know, scapegoating and attacking uh, people who have that same orientation that you do. Uh, but, you know, for Ariel Pink, it's a different thing. You know, again, he could sort of like uh, morally kind of skirt all the expectations that one may have for a conservative or conservatives may have for others. But at the same time, he can say like, you know, oh, the, the election's corrupt and I'm here to support my president and this, that and the other thing. And what's so funny, you know, on top of that about Ariel Pink is like, you know, he's really like made so much hay over being victimized over supporting Donald Trump and, and all this other shit. When like if you look back at the headlines, Ariel Pink, uh, from what I understand, Garth Brooks isn't super staunchly uh, in any political camp. But, you know, if, if uh, and I remember, you know, a lot of his shit back in the 90s. Uh, but if that's changed recently, you know, let me know. Um, but, you know, again, having said that. Uh, Ariel Pink, um, I think, uh, uh, has, if you look back at the headlines, gotten so many breaks and so many just sort of like, you know, articles and publications, even as he says the most ridiculous and sometimes offensive shit. And this is the case for me, too. Uh, you know, coming at him with the attitude that, no, oh, he's just a troll and he doesn't mean it and he's he's just a provocateur and, you know, we're just giving him space to kind of just, you know, be a, be a little Sid Vicious-esque and, uh, you know, just be a little over the top. And, you know, look, uh, for a lot of people, including myself, uh, rejecting the results of a democratic election, a legitimate democratic election, uh, I, I think if, you know, you're rejecting that narrative, you're kind of crazy, frankly. Um, you know, being against that is, is, is sort of a deal breaker for me because, you know, <laughs> At that point, you're 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 essentially just embracing a Trump dictatorship, and yeah, you know, I, I I don't think America should be anybody's dictatorship, frankly. So <laughs> that that's just my view. I, I know it's probably <laughs> I know for some that's probably a little too far gone. Maybe maybe that's very Marxist of me to believe that, but that that's just my that's just my potential. You know, that that's just my personal thought. That's just my personal thought. Um, so uh. uh uh, yeah, Lana. Lana is a, a bit of a contrarian, isn't she? I, I don't know how uh, far Lana's uh, political views go. You know, I I, I don't want to trash her too much or anything. But when she has sort of been met with, you know, these uh, um, questions of being a conservative and this, that, and the other thing, uh, she, she's very much rejected them quickly. I, I think Lana is very much in. I don't, I don't want to be super mean and disrespectful here, but she, she's very much in that like 
center of the road, liberal white woman kind of camp where some of her views lean one way, some of her views lean another way. And and it, it seems like on some of the big issues, she has the right idea. But then on other issues, she'll maybe go in a direction that you don't quite, you know, want her to go in because she doesn't want to be inconvenienced or something. Uh, you know, yeah, she's not not a feminist, which, again, that maybe was a typo. Maybe it wasn't. Yeah. Dated a cop, as you say here again. I, I think Lana is also sort of a, a mixed bag. And, and I don't think, you know, for, the, for however many issues we have with her socially and politically, I, I don't think she's anywhere near like Lil Wayne or not Lil Wayne. Sorry, Ariel Pink. I just saw Lil Wayne in, in chat and I said Lil Wayne. Um, so uh, uh, call call Hassan, Tony. I, uh, I hope Hassan's doing doing good. Uh, hello from Greece. Hey, how are you? I hope you're doing well. So, uh, so yeah, you know, I, I think that's like the bulk of my thoughts here on this, uh, on this take and on this issue. We'll get this up on the streaming channel later. If you guys want to want to rewatch it at any point, if you missed any of the, the rant and the conversation, 